Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating this sort of moving text effect in Photoshop. Before we begin, however, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better please feel free to share this coupon with family and friends. Let's switch back to Photoshop and we're going to create a new document. I'm making my document screen size, so I'll choose File and then New. My screen size is 1920 by 1080, so I'll select that and click Create. We will need a black background to work with and I have made mine white, so I'm going to select black as my foreground colour here go to the Paint Bucket tool and just click in this layer to make my background black. Now I'm going to add a new layer because I need to put text into my document. I'll go to the Type tool. I'm going to select white as the type color that I'm going to use. And that's going to be 255, 255, 255 in the red, green and blue channels. I'll click OK. The font I'm using is called Myriad Pro and I'm using Bold Semi-Extended. I'll click in the document and I'm just going to type the word wind and I'm going to do that in uppercase. I'll select over the type because I think it's a little bit small and go to the Move tool. Now I can adjust its size. To do this I'm holding the Shift key to just size it up. In some versions of Photoshop you may not be using the Shift key. Just test that to see which one sizes the text in a proportional manner. Now I have my text spread out a little bit so let me go to the Type tool and show you where you can do that. When you have the Type tool enabled you can get to a character panel here so just click on that. You can also get to it by choosing Window and then Character. With your type selected, you can increase the spacing between the letters by going over here to the Tracking option and just drag it. This is a scrubby slider, so you can just drag the word or you can adjust the figure in that little dialog. I just want my letters to be spread out far enough so that we can get this sort of wind effect in the illustration. Now we're going to the Layers panel and the first thing that we're going to do with this text is to convert it to a smart object. So I'll right click over this side, just over this side of the dialog. If you right click the thumbnail, something else happens. If you right click here, something else happens. So right click here and choose Convert to Smart Object. The benefit of this is going to be we're going to make a duplicate of this smart object and they're going to be linked. So I'm just going to drag this on to the new icon. So we've now got two smart objects. If I double click on this to open up the smart object, you'll see that if I make a change to this, I'm just going to make a lowercase i here and then click the check mark and close this and save it. When we go back into the document, both of these objects are now altered. So these two smart objects are linked. And that's going to be important later on in that we'll create this effect, but we'll be able to change the text should we wish to do so. Now to edit it, you can edit either of these smart objects because they are linked. So I'm going back to this and let's just go and make that the uppercase I again. If you think things are not fitting correctly, you can always go to Image and then Reveal All and just make sure that all of your type is being revealed. Last time, the top of the letter I, that dot was being cut off. Well, if I'd chosen Image Reveal All, that would have revealed it. Whenever you edit a smart object, you're just going to close it and click Yes to save it. So we now have these two smart object layers. They're both identical. We're going to focus on the one underneath. So turn this one off and focus on this. What we're going to do is apply a wind filter. Well, the wind filter a number of times to this object. To do this, we'll choose Filter and then Stylize and Wind. The wind filter only has a few settings and the more important one to choose is whether you're coming from the left or from the right. Now I'm just going to turn this on to blast because it's a little bit easier to see here. When we're coming from the left, the distortion is on the insides of these characters down here and down here. I want it from the right because I want it to be on the leading edge of these characters. 
So we're going to distort from the right and we're going to start with blast because that's a big effect. So I'll click OK. And then we'll go and do it again. Filter. And we can just click here on wind because that's going to reapply the filter with the same options. But of course we could change them too if we wanted to. I'll click OK. Now don't be surprised if Photoshop messes up with this. Sometimes you'll find that you don't actually get the wind filter applied to everything because Photoshop seems to think that you're not really being serious. But just keep doing it because it will sort itself out eventually. Now I'm going to apply this three times. So I get a really big wind effect. The nice thing about the fact that we're using a smart object here is that we could disable any of these at any time. So if we think we've gone too far, we can disable them, but it's probably better to go too far rather than not far enough. So in the spirit of that, let's go and do it yet again. Now this is a sort of fairly chunky effect. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and you'll see that the effect is fairly chunky. We can smooth that off a little bit by choosing the wind filter, but this time using the wind option. So again, filter and wind, because we can change the options here. I'm going to this wind option and that will smooth things out a little bit. So it's getting a little bit fluffier and we're going to do that two or three times just with the wind option this time. You can see how fluffy it's getting on the ends. Now this fluffiness is going to be crucial to the colouring later on. So you do want to be using this wind filter in the wind mode because they're the areas that are going to be coloured. Just going to zoom back out. I'm pressing Control 0 on a PC. That would be Command 0 on a Mac. Now you can increase the fluffiness here by applying a blur filter as well. We're going to do that. Filter, blur and we'll choose a motion blur. Now with the motion blur you want an angle of zero because that's going to make the blur work in the same direction as the wind filter effect did. I've got a distance set to 40 here. I think it's way too much. I usually like to bring it down to somewhere between about 15 and 20. Here it is at 17. It's a pretty good effect. The thing with the blur filter is that not only do we get some sort of fuzziness in our lines, which is really good, but we also get some fuzziness along these edges of the text. And we may not want that to be too intense. So just there's a compromise to be made here and you'll need to make that compromise in terms of how far you want the distance to be and how much fuzziness along the edge here of the characters that you're prepared to put up with. I've chosen 15 here. I'll click OK. So now we've got the effect that we sort of came here looking for. We can tighten it up a little bit by turning back on this second copy of the wind text. And because it doesn't have the blur effects associated with it, it's actually going to cover up those fuzzy edges. Well, it does when I'm working with 15. If I was working with a slightly larger distance on that motion blur, I might still get some sort of softness along that edge. But the combination of 15 and then putting this text back on top, a duplicate of it, is actually tightening everything everything up really nicely. So the only thing that we need to deal with now is how to add some color to this and we're going to do it with a hue saturation adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer and then hue saturation. We'll click OK and then we'll click colorize. Now the hue saturation adjustment layer will not recolor white and it won't recolor black but it does recolor grey and remember as we were making this wind filter effect a little bit softer, we were starting to get some pixels in there that were not fully opaque and so there were sort of some, some grey pixels in there. Well that's what's being recolored here. So I'm going to increase the saturation and I'm going to hunt around for a colour to use and I sort of like this sort of turquoise blue. It's really quite an attractive colour to use. Now if you think the effect is too much because all of these wind filter effects were applied to a smart object, we can just start turning them off. And so you can experiment with just how many of each you need to get the effect that you like. I'm actually liking this one a lot better. I think that was probably a bit too much, but this is a really nice effect. It's also had the effect of knocking out some bleeding of the wind effect that was appearing over this side of the document. Well, it's disappeared now, but it was there a little bit earlier. 
Now, if you remember, we created this wind text as a smart object. So let's go here to this smart object and we'll double click on it. I'm going to change the text. I'm going to make it windy. So I'm going to add the letter Y on the end. So I'm just typing the letter Y, but of course we can't see it because it's off the edge of this document. I'll go to image and then reveal all. I'm happy with this, so I'm going to close the smart object and click yes to save the changes. And now we're back in the document and the text has changed, both the layer that has no filters applied to it and this one here. Now, if we want to make changes to the size of this, we're going to need to do it to both. So I'm going to select both layers and go to the Move tool. And now I can just adjust the size of the text. I'm warned that the smart filters are going to be turned off temporarily. They may or may not, don't worry about that, but they're going to come back later. So I'm just going to bring in this text a little bit and click the check mark. And then it all gets reinstated. So the edge effect here that was cut off a minute ago is now reinstated as Photoshop has a look again at the filters and just reapplies it to the text. Just make sure that it's working correctly. I think I still have a bit too much here, so I'm going to perhaps dial it down a little bit. But these are easily selectable, easily editable. Your text is also easily able to be edited with this effect. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and that subscribe button so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.